Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and uh, it's time for another Bulgarian workout for you guys, and I killed it today. Uh, everything was easy, and I've realized I had DOMS yesterday from doing those <laughs> little bit of volume on the deadlifts, but it didn't affect me. It did not affect me in any way. I crushed my squats. So I realized, yeah, I'm at a point where I'm now adapting and recovering to this style of training. I'm getting progressively stronger, slowly. And I'm recovering from volume. And I'm adding a little bit of volume work at the end of certain things that I need to work on. Uh, and I've added GPP in. Hell, even the scale's starting to go down. I'm losing weight now. Um, my strength's going up. I'm not going to complain. I'm not going to complain. But in spite of the DOMS, I walked in. And when I did my 445 squat... I went in, got myself in the mindset to get really tight under that bar because I knew I had DOMS and everything. In fact, my hamstrings cramped a little bit last night, uh, so I had to soak in a hot bath after those deadlifts, and the weight felt like 315 when I unracked it. And any of you who squat heavy, you know what I'm talking about. When you unrack a weight and you're tight and you unrack it and it's light, it doesn't matter if it's a PR. It doesn't matter if you've ever lifted it before. It could be five pounds heavier than anything you've ever touched in your whole life you're gonna get it it's gonna be an easy rep and it was like I got under that 445 and it felt like 315 now I just increased to that as my my workload for this week you know because I did 447 days in a row uh, so I went up to 445 yesterday yesterday it was a little heavy it was uh, a little over a two second rep today it was 1.9 seconds 1.9 and it's one of those where it's like I could have gone up I should have gone heavier like it was at best RPE 9. Uh, like I probably today, I probably could have gotten close to a 500 squat. But we're just going to stick this out the way that I planned it. Uh, we're not going to take unnecessary risk. Slow and steady. But today I had a hell of a lot still in the tank. It was a 1.9 second rep on the concentric. Because I again I do a frame count. My software lets me do that. Uh, but yeah, I unracked it, got myself in the zone, got calm, deep breaths, walked it out. It felt light. felt like nothing on my back. So I knew this was going to be good. Look, boom. Walked it in. And, and the other kicker, normally my quads throb for a couple minutes after my, my highest set of squats. They didn't hurt after that. My quads are finally adapting to this. They've been my weak link in my, uh, my squats for a little while. They have been for a little while, and it's because I didn't squat for two years and only did deadlifts. Uh, they've been a weak link. Uh, they're catching up because they don't hurt, and they're not sore after that at all today. So that is really a positive thing because I can't say that happens every day. But the fastest rep I've hit with the heaviest weight I've touched, I've only touched it twice since coming back to squatting, and it felt light. My quads don't hurt. That's awesome. I'm really, really happy with that. Really happy with that. Uh, I went ahead and benched 315 today. Good pause bench. Happy with that too. Happy with that also. Um, now, my tendon is still a little bit sore on my left bicep, so I'm not going to do anything that's going to inflame it. Until that goes down, I won't chin up. Um, I'm going to figure out what else I can do to work around it because, hey, rows will still make me stronger at pulling. So I did volume rows today, and I think I'm going to do that. Uh, days where I deadlift, I'm just going to do a little bit of volume with a trap bar with triples uh, to get better at it, learn proficiency, do a little bit of volume rowing. Uh, I may, after some of these workouts, I may not film it because it's just fluff for me, a little bit of dips, right? All these little exercises to bring up a little bit of muscle mass within my recovery ability. is isn't going to be a bad thing, but I'm going to stick with big movements that are going to put a lot of muscle on you. Pin leg row is a big movement. Dip is a big movement. Uh, Trap bar deadlifts are definitely a big movement. Now, of course, some someone, an Olympic lifter in the comments will comment also, didn't like me saying I'm doing power snatches for that. But my perspective on it, power snatches do work a lot of muscles in the body, particularly like my shoulder girdle. Like I feel them a lot in my shoulder girdle. So if I come in and do, you know, a few sets of five of those in the evening, uh, like if I don't feel like doing barbell complexes, I might just do this for a little bit of volume. Uh, and I might just do barbell complexes every other day. And then every other day, maybe build up and do a bunch of triples or something with snatches, um, start getting progressively better at them. Uh, again, it's just extra training volume. That, that's all it is. Just extra volume. 
maybe it'll have some adaptative stress. Uh, you know, we could argue that a snatch isn't an amazing hypertrophy exercise, but it's still adding total workload to a lot of muscles. Uh, the bench is easy. Look at that. Bam. 315, easy. It's what, like three days in a row I've hit that. My daily minimum is 305, and now 315 is comfortable. Um, <laughs> we might as well just stick with that as long as I can keep doing it. And I'll know when I do the 265 each time by how light it feels where I'm at on that. All right, guys, I came in psyched up on the overhead press. I came in to do the press, and guess what? I'm like, I'm going to get 225. It's going to be easy today because 205 was light. It definitely was not near my max, the 205, which I do next. I'm just like, I'm going to hit 225. I forgot to close my belt. Like you guys see me afterwards, I reach down to touch my belt, and I pull my hand back, and I'm looking down like all like, what in the hell happened? What happened? Like, I'm freaking out because I didn't close the belt. It was hard. Like, I, the most I've touched on the press without a belt has been 195. I've done 195 beltless. Uh, but I started putting a belt on when I started going 200 plus again. Right? So I'm not used to that. And it felt weird and it made me grind. It made me grind. And it's funny because I still more or less locked it. But it was a grinder. It was hard. It was not as easy as... Uh, my rep was two days ago but I did it without the belt closed so no belt that's not bad I don't think it's bad for no belt the fact that I had to grind a bit and then oh yeah there I am you know I'll take it you know wasn't a perfect rep but I didn't have the belt as you guys saw me looking down and messing with them. like what in the hell my belt wasn't closed I did it beltless so I'll take it that's a PR for me to have even tried to do a weight like that beltless all right i did five sets of three on the pin lay rows i'm only going to flip in the weight one time for you guys this is my volume for today my hamstrings are still a little fatigued from the pulls yesterday so i'm like let me just knock out some triples with the pin lay rows uh just get them as explosive as possible uh, again extra training volume and you know what i could use the extra grip work i could use the bicep work i could use the back work that's fine uh I'm not worried about my back outgrowing me as a lifter. I mean, let's be realistic here. Is having extra meat on your back ever going to hurt you as a strength athlete? No. No. Absolutely not. And, you know, it'll give me a little bit of bicep stimulation to help on the days when I can't do chin-ups or the, my bicep old injury and everything is an issue. And people need to remember, I actually have scar tissue in that left bicep. So it makes it problematic at times. I'm going to get my chin up strong, but I'm going to have to be slow and careful with it. And I'm just going to have to pay attention. And if my connective tissue is sore, I'm not doing an exercise that makes it sore again. You know, there were, there were times when I've been able to do, what, three or four chin ups in a row, three different days at a max in a row. And then I'm having times where I'm having to take two or three days off from doing it. So you might have weeks where I only do one or two chin ups. Um, and that's fine. I will work around my limitation. Work around it. In this case, this doesn't inflame my bicep at all with the pronated grip. And it still works my biceps. Not as effectively as a chin-up. But the pin lay row is a good all-around exercise. This will get me good at deadlifting again. It'll help with my grip training. It'll help give me hypertrophy and strength in some of the muscles that are going to be used on my chin-up. Uh, and just adding meat to my back is good for the squat and the deadlift in general. So that's fine. I'll use these as one of my volume exercises. And again, I'm doing triples. I've talked to you guys in the past about doing volume with triples. Um, and I may add volume over time. Like I did five sets today. Um, just go, we'll just flip in that bench again. That bench was pretty today. I was happy with it. So we'll watch it through the rest of the video while I talk. So that's not me obviously doing the bench press again. That's the, the same clip from earlier. But... I was really happy with the lifts today. I mean, they were light, the bench was easy, the squat was way easier than it should have been, especially with doms and my hamstrings and lower back and everything from doing the little bit of volume on the hex bar yesterday. So we'll do that again tomorrow. I'll do some hex bar pulls tomorrow and we'll increase that a little bit and just keep working it up. And I think I might here afterwards, I might just mess with some dips. Um, just for a little bit of extra training volume. I don't know, I haven't decided or not, or if I'll just do my uh, barbell complexes. So pretty much what I'm going to do. But again, another one of those days where I'm real happy with it. I'm happy with everything. And, and the scale is down. So it's like I'm gaining strength 
and losing a little bit of body weight. All right, that's not a bad thing because we know we're gaining muscle when we're gaining strength. And if the scale's going down, I have to be losing fat. So the, uh, the tightening up my diet and adding a little bit of GPP for a guy my size and my body weight and my body fat will go a long way to start trimming some fluff off. Um, and it's not going to happen overnight. I'm not going to do any sort of rapid fat loss, guys. I'm not not going to happen. Uh, it be detrimental to my gains. But I can slowly lose some over time. And as long as I can keep increasing strength while doing it, and I have enough fat to do that right now, I think that's doable. Just got to be patient and careful with it. So that's what I'm going to do. All right. So I hope it's been informative. And I will talk to you guys next time.